Bucky O'Hare. So again, this is more of a video with an emphasis on quick tips and tricks, but I can't help to make it a little bit of a mini review too. I didn't want to do a full review walkthrough of the game though, as it's been covered quite a bit, and this game is so fucking solid that I think it's a disservice to fully cover and spoil every little detail of the game. I mean, it's truly a title that must be played by any fans of action platformers on the NES. So let's dive in. So as a later release coming out in the States in 92, Bucky was published and developed by Konami, one of the top dog publishers and developers in the NES hierarchy. And it was really a unique game for Konami as they were known for awesome shmups and great original action titles, but action platformers like this were arguably dominated by Capcom. Though their titles to me at the time felt a bit like they were recycled formulas. Stage selects, Disney games, duck 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 goose. But it's still more than awesome that someone stepped into the ring and did it just as good, if not better. Now let's get this out of the way, if you like Mega Man games and Contra, or better yet you're very good at those games or maybe even find them a breeze to get through, then I can't see this not being a game for you. Even if that's not the case, I still think this is a game that everyone should give a shot to. So let's jump right into the game. On the stage select screen you can pick between four planets. You need to do the green planet to get the character Blinky as he's required to complete the blue planet, otherwise it's all fair game. The easiest route to me though is green, red, yellow, blue as I find this route has the best crescendo of difficulty, but the game has good replay value and you may want to try other combinations on subsequent playthroughs, even just so you can play different levels with other characters. So the green planet. Ooh, right off the bat, a 1-up. Your character has 3 life bar upgrades. You start with the lowest one, and if you get 2 more, you're full. You keep this till you game over, then you have to build it back up. The power bar works the same way with the power icons, but you need to also upgrade each character's powers. So if you have a character that's not fully powered up, switch to another character if you're going to get one of these. Otherwise it's a waste or it can be skipped. There's also 1-up icons and there's also these coins that are bonus 3,000 points. This game is pretty generous with its 1-ups and you'll get one pretty often just by getting points, so these coins can be very worthwhile. Bucky is a great all-around character. He can high jump as well as shoot up, left and right, and a lot of people overlook this, but he can also shoot down by jumping. It's very good to know. Blinky from the green planet can float and hover for a limited amount of time and has an arcing shot. He and Bucky are really the core characters it seems, and he also seems to be a bit faster, at least to me anyway, and he's also a bit smaller. I'm not 100% sure it makes a difference, but at times to me it seems it does. Jenny has a fast firing shot and a mind beam thing that has its moments. She's defenseless while using it though. That I can cling and jump on walls and has a three-way shot. It has a bit slower output and can only be fired straight ahead, but it has its moments. Really has a strong shot that fires quick and it can be charged for more damage. It's kind of like Mega Man's Mega Buster when you charge it. Okay, so back to the green planet. Ooh, another one up! So you can get this one by letting the beam on the rope fall to the life icon. Jump as soon as you get it though or this thing might fall off Super Mario Brothers style. Ooh, another one up! Take the log and charge your jump and release it to get back up. At the part with the log on the river thing, you can jump over here for a coin. Fuck waiting for another log. If you got at least one power up for Bucky, if you get right to the edge you can make the jump. Ooh, a one up. Soon thereafter there's a waterfall with some pickups, one ups, life refills, etc etc. If you can catch some. I usually don't get any of them. On the next screen before the exit, if Bucky's not fully powered all the way up at this point, jump on one of the toad ships to get another power up. The boss is pretty easy to figure out. Welcome to the red planet. In general, take note that being hit mid-jump will kill your momentum and can lead to certain death if you're hit by jumping over certain obstacles. This is good to keep in mind throughout the game. Be sure to power up characters that need it. Ooh, a 1-up! Use character strengths to your advantage. The Lava Quick Man reminiscence stage in Act 3 can take some trial and error to learn the path if you're not familiar with it. There's not too much room for error. Call me crazy, but I think Blinky's a little more faster than Bucky. What do you think? Regardless, I can do this with both characters, but it seems Blinky has a lucky rabbit's foot. Don't worry about the items so much. Ooh, a 1-up! Ducking can help on these fire rings, which look awesome. They're very reminiscent of the fire from the Konami title Contra 3, as well as Life Force or Gradius. When jumping on these rolling rocks, these ones from above you can jump through, or in other words, they won't crush you. Ooh, another 1-up! Ooh, another 1-up! Ah, I missed it. The big green ball part jump to and fro. Don't die here like this. Then wait for the green ball to come back your way till jumping on another rolling rock. It takes a few seconds. If you're a badass motherfucker and you're lucky, you can prep for this jump with Blinky's floating jump. Yeah, that's badass. Be sure to headbang whenever possible to the kick-ass music. Ooh, another one up. Another very easy boss. If you're very accurate with your shots, you can even take him out before he does his special attacks. Ooh, high scoring for more one-ups for the win. The yellow planet. Ooh, a one-up. And a coin pushing the score to get me another one. 
That's what I'm talking about. And then wait, another one up? Wow. As always, it's worth the time to get your new party member powered up, even if you have to die for it. It's worth it, as long as you have some lives to spare. Ooh, another one up! On the climb up on these toad ships, every few there's always a stationary ship that's not moving. Use this to get your bearings. At the end, keep in mind you can jump through the platform so you don't have to do a perfect jump. On the asteroid part, if you don't want to wait around, Blinky can get you to a few rocks on his own. Ooh, a one up! The space minecart area in Act 6 can take some trial and error if you're unfamiliar, but it's not too bad. Wow, look at this speed. It's like blast processing on the NES. It's at least as fast, if not faster, than anything else I've seen on the NES, like Battletoads, Bioforce Ape, and others. But anyway, on the first set of carts, if you want to shave off some time and you want to take the risk and look like a badass in the process, Blinky can actually skip the second cart and jump on the third minecart here. Jump as soon as you reach the incline, but be sure to have a full charge. The spike part is tricky if you've never done it before. Duck as soon as you switch carts. Ooh, a 1-up! The boss again is pretty easy once you know what's going on. You have some options. You can take out the gun that shoots this wave beam, or the satellite up on top. Shooting the one on top though will piss him off and he'll go into charge mode and start firing a big laser beam. In the crevice, if you're Bucky, why not get some extra shots off by shooting up while he passes by? Once his weapons are disabled, shoot him between the eyes. Ooh, extra lives! The blue planet. So Blinky is required to shoot the ice blocks. There's some hidden goodies in some of these, but there's also the occasional toad. There's multiple approaches to these motherfucking snakes on this Monday to Friday level. There's an easy way and a hard way, but whatever works is all that matters. If you're having trouble, assess the situation and something will come to you. This isn't battle toads. Sometimes being speedy will also offer different options. Ooh, a one up! Mm. Use your little jump by not holding down the button too long. Again, sometimes I think Blinky is better for these smaller gap jumps, but honestly, I don't think it makes a difference. On this iceberg island thing, once it gets super small, if you have life to spare, go ahead and wait it out so you don't have to move around, slipping and sliding. Here you need to have this toad throw a spiky ice ball so there's no regular ice box to stop its path. Use Blinky and have the ice clear and the path will open up and you can climb down. Now these items aren't impossible to get like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pizzas, but they are dangerous as these spikes are really easy to walk into, so maybe avoid these. Ooh, the fish eggs from Mega Man 3! Sometimes there's goodies in these, and or toads. You can also shoot the vines to tether to. Ooh, a 1-up! A pretty straightforward boss, but you need a serious trigger finger. Don't stand all the way to the left, there's a sweet spot here that can get you a high hit to miss ratio. Fill him full of lead while jumping his projectiles. Time it right or try doing this like quick two jump thing when he decides to freeze the water. If you're caught in this, don't fret, just keep firing while you're frozen. Fire away! If the water's getting high, make sure you don't do full jumps, but if you got a quick trigger finger, you should have plenty of headroom left at the end of this. So all your crew and friends, minus Blinky, are taken for sport after being captured in a toad mothership. You must rescue them from their cells. Here's where shit can really hit the fan for a lot of people, and as a kid, this slaughtered me. After two rentals, I never fully beat this. And to be frank, I was pissed. Years later, I got a little further, but then I discovered the shit really didn't hit the fan yet. But we're getting there. So the cell level, act one. So these things shoot in sequential order. Take them out with Bucky if you want. This jump can be tricky. Use Blinky if you're at all apprehensive. Get the health if you need. You should be powered up though, so skip it or risk it if you need or want it. Same as Konami put a Simon's Quest reference in this game. Right here. These two blocks, they fall. Jump a lot if you're not sure where they are or float. Then there's this guy in a cell. He ain't bothering you, so don't fuck with him. Leave him alone. Ooh, a one up! These shock beam things are a nuisance, but just time it right. When they're on conveyor belts, jumping can ease the timing a bit. Then there's the introduction to the Mega Man blocks. These infuriated me as a kid, but now they're really not so bad. You can practice a bit for an upcoming session with these. You can get this coin without using the blocks, but it helps to get a feel for them. Unlike Mega Man blocks though, you can actually jump through these, which makes them so much easier than those infamous blocks in the Blue Bomber games. Go left from the blocks, and again there's a few more disappearing Simon's Quest blocks. Then you get the Jenny. I would never hurt you, Jenny. I know you wouldn't, Forrest. I wanted to be your boyfriend. Pretty much all of your imprisoned crew are hypnotized and you have to fight briefly. They're not too tough and there's multiple ways to approach these brief encounters. After Jenny, you're in the red room. Go up and to the left to go to an elevator that takes you to a room with extra stuff. Ooh, a 1-up! There's also a life refill in this block. Backtrack to the red room and ride the arrow blocks. Ooh, a 1-up! Good thing that jumping is pretty good in this game as there's spikes everywhere. Ooh, and another- Shut the fuck up, will ya? Take the elevator to the next area, then go up to get Willy. and then you're off to get your last comrade, Deadeye. Okay, now here's the friggin' block part. Study the pattern. Get the rhythm of when the blocks switch. That's really the key. Once you're feeling the tempo, go from pink to green to pink and right up. Then there's some simple arrow blocks. 
For the next tricky part, I use this approach. As Bucky, I go green to green, and then I high jump. Don't worry, there's time to make this jump. Then you might as well power up a new team member. Then jump back, make sure you're on the edge, but if you miss it, it's not the end of the world. You can kind of walk over a single space, almost TMNT style. Walk over it? Do this up to here, and then you're free from all of this. So one more time. Over and out. Now if you take the path straight ahead, you must do it all over again. <laughs> so fuck it. I guess it's good practice, but next time be sure to go down. Now you're in an elevator with spiked ceilings and rocks. Most people use Bucky and shoot up for this. I actually have always, for whatever reason, used Jenny for this, but whatever works for you. Then you just have to be very careful for these spike sections. Again, I feel Blinky is smaller and quicker. Whether that's true or not, this can ease some tension for me to play as him. But any character can get you through this. And then you must fight Deadeye. And then the crew is reunited again for the second time. Okay, now shit really seems to be hitting the fan. I mean, until just this past year, this was really my threshold for the game. But once again, I later came to realize that difficulty still hasn't really hit its apex, but we'll be getting to that point very soon. So with a reunited crew, it's time to escape this toad mothership via the salvage chute. Right off the bat, a new enemy, tough as nails too. Sometimes he'll break into three pieces as other characters, but really seems to do the trick best. These spiked areas are also tough. High jump as Bucky or float over them as Blinky to be safe. This part is tough too. Trial and error. Have fun dying a lot. Seriously, have fun. Sometimes you just gotta laugh at some of this stuff. Ooh, a one-up, but ah, forget it. Then there's these giant pincher bugs. Time jumps can keep them from hurting you. Make your way through it. Then you'll bump into these brain-sucking slugs. Take them out various ways, but if they grab you, get them off by jumping headfirst into the spikes. Just don't jump too hard. <laughs> That's actually really pretty awesome. Ooh, on a one-up, use Deadeye. In the crazy spiked room, just don't be intimidated. In the dark room, if you're quick as Deadeye, you can sometimes see a bit more of the room before the lights go out. Otherwise, just use the spotlights to see where the ends and the beginnings of the pipes are. Deadeye, Blinky, and even Bucky's powers can be good in this room. In the quicksand room, ooh, a one-up. You can ride the boxes to avoid these suckers. You're safe on the very edge, but don't let them get you or else, well, you know what's gonna happen. I'm actually surprised they let you touch this red quicksand without getting an instant death, but I guess they got lazy. Now this boss is fun, but it's instant death if you're not aware of the dead zones, which are pretty much any direct contact with them. I think a lot of people go with Deadeye for this guy. I can see why, his ankle shot is nice, however you have to move back to avoid touching the guy before he ducks and shoots his death ray laser. So I actually stick with Bucky, and even occasionally Jenny, at least for the first part of this battle. For the second part though, Jenny all the way. But Deadeye can work too, just be sure to time Jenny right for the boss's ducking part, as again, she can't move or stop her power till it's done doing its thing center of the magma tank. Now this can be tough as they try to psych you out a bit, but you can do it! You can do it! High jumping as Bucky and floating as Blinky can be used, but eventually Deadeye's wall climb is the key. I hate you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I hate you. I'm a robot. I do not compute the word. I hate you. Whatever! You're just jealous you can't get a piece of this cotton tail. Hey, big boy. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hey, baby. <sighs> Are you one of the ones who, like, does it? <sighs> so you tread along. The game is great at throwing new stuff at you. Actually, it's really amazing how it constantly surprises you. So you get to these brutes who you simply can't kill and they do a lot of damage. Jump over them somehow. Now this part can be a pain. For me, I ultimately figured it out by pausing the game and thinking about the problem. So pause if you're not getting through it, see if you can logically think it out. If you time it right, you can also jump right as the puzzle switches. This helps a lot as this can stump you, but I believe there's a couple ways to do it. Now this boss is a lot of fun, but it's pretty busy and hectic. It kind of reminds me of the boss on the second level of the first NES Batman game, but it's way better. You gotta take these things out in two forms where all this other shit is going on. Then you shoot the center and blast away while avoiding the pink fuzzball that shoots out six projectiles. One thing to notice, this laser doesn't hurt you by touching it, only when it's firing. Again, I like this fight and it's fun. I do it with Bucky, but Deadeye can be pretty useful too, and I've yet to use Willy, but I'm sure he could really shine on this battle too. As could Jenny, but I think it would be quite challenging with Blinky. 
Now I hope your shmup shooting skills aren't rusty as the rest of the game plays like a shoot 'em up. Yeah, each character has their own way of shooting. There's these other toads who want to escape with their lives too, and they're desperately grab at you. If they attach, they'll bring you down unless you hold the up button to stay afloat. Now this is pretty fucked up if you think about it. I mean, the toad mothership is going to blow, and these guys are trying to desperately escape with their lives, but what can you do? It's like, sorry guys, I can't take you with me, so to get them off your ass, you run them into the spikes. That's messed up, man. Sorry guys. So you'll get used to the downward momentum these guys put on you, so be very careful as your speed and weight goes back to normal suddenly after having to hold up constantly. You can easily fly yourself right into the often spiked ceilings after losing these guys. Take note of these arrows, they always point the correct path. I can't really advise getting any items though as they're extremely risky, but if you've recently game over, maybe consider getting a few items to get your life full again. Otherwise they're just distractions. Stay focused as too many repeated deaths here can really risk tedium, which leads to careless mistakes and frustration, so really just focus on getting through this as it's not easy. On these glass inserts between the pipe things here, Bucky and Blinky's weapons aren't the best due to their slower firing rate. So the stage starts speeding up, but eventually you'll make it to this mid-stage boss. This mini-boss isn't too bad. You don't die touching the ceiling or floor, and that lands you right up with where you want to aim. I like Jenny or Willy for their more rapid-fire style for this, but it's not too tough. But then you make it to this ship, and it's hell. It's really hard to explain. The first time I beat him, not to mention this game, I had game over, and when you game over, your life bar goes back to a default size. Yeah, and this can make the game very challenging, and many would say this boss is almost impossible. Though much tougher and requiring a bit more caution, I might not have too much trouble with all the other bosses with this size life bar, but this motherfucker took me over an hour. I was determined as hell though, and I finally did it. It was quite a gaming accomplishment for me the first time I beat it. But now with more experience at the game and having a full life meter, I gotta say, it's still damn tough. So not to spoil it for you, but I won't leave this too cryptic, and I'll I'll just give you a solid approach for this. So basically the main thing is taking out all these side cannons, I guess I'll call them. Bucky can shoot them from up front, but his weaker shot and the limited time constraint usually doesn't get the job done. So you're going to want to get dirty and take them out from up top. It's dangerous up there, but you need to take out at least one, and better yet two. Deadeye is okay, but I use Blinky. If you're only going to take out one of these, that's fine as long as you did some damage to the others. But two is better, especially if they're neighbors. You'll likely lose more life taking out two, so I don't know, pick your poison. You'll end up at the back of the ship. You'll want to shoot at the ship's rocket engine area, but it won't take damage till the ship stops moving and it's in a stationary position. Then you can fire away. This thing here alternates where it fires a laser at you. After that, try to get a few hits off before you have to go in this crevice here. And hopefully you can take out another one of these so you have room to survive. It's really tight quarters to dodge in. Then back up front in order not to do a full repeat of the process we just did, use Bucky to take out the rest of those side cannons. They leave room for you to do this, just dodge the shots coming at you, then you just have to go to the back of the ship again to finish off the engine. This can be a tough one, and you're close to death at all times. After successfully taking it down, you should feel somewhat satisfied for 20 seconds until you're immediately thrown into battle with the Toad Air Marshal, who's very tough too. The best approach for this though is using Bucky and constantly firing, then focus strictly on just dodging all the projectiles and the Toad himself. With this approach, you'll automatically be getting plenty of shots in without even trying, so survival is really the key, and when you focus on just that in itself, over simply just hitting the guy, it now becomes just a pattern that you have to maintain. I know it's crazy, but I actually find it gets a little bit easier as the background gets tighter, as then it's more consistent. It's a hard one that really becomes a test of endurance, but eventually he goes down and you escape the mothership into space and get the ending and the end credits. So that's Bucky O'Hare. Now I think it's obvious that I personally really like the game, I don't want to go all fanboy out on it, but in my opinion it truly is one of Konami's best titles on the NES, and in general it's also a very good platformer in its own right. Coming out in 1992, it's also one of my favorite later releases for the NES, and it may be my favorite game of 1992, which if you look at that year, while it had a fair amount of turds, it also had some of the best titles arguably ever released on the NES. Unfortunately also many of those are also very sought after and often too pricey, but you know, what can you do? Um, let's see here, what game am I going to play? Ooh, Little Samson, my favorite game. I'm glad I didn't spend $50 on this one. Graphically, the game's great, and at times it really does almost look 16-bit. It's easy to overlook this because you kind of forget to notice when you're playing it, but there's absolutely no screen flicker and absolutely no slowdown of any kind. I mean, not every NES game suffered from this common NES trait, many of the NES games that you know or are considered classics will slow down or flicker when there's too much going on, but this game has none of it, and it rises it to the top of one of the more graphically impressive NES games, at least to me. Sound-wise, the music is fantastic, and the sound effects are classic Konami. It's an NES soundtrack that would easily keep good company 
company with Mega Man and other solid soundtracks of the era. Some people complain about the action button being used for double duty as it's used for shooting and the special power-ups, but it's never really been an issue to me. Seems some also would have preferred the character switch via sub-menu, much like the first TMNT game, or the way Mega Man switches his weapons, but had it been designed this way, I think many people would have complained and wished it was on the fly like it is now, so I think it's a preference thing, but at the end of the day, all the characters play and control roughly the same. Perhaps the most controversial thing about this game is its difficulty, and this is an issue that seems to be often a full heated argument, at least in general, and it's very common and constantly comes up in the retro gaming world, often being about skill games versus these trial and error games, where you need to memorize the game to play it well. Anyone can do that and get good at that if you die a thousand times and you memorize it, blah blah. I already opened with the fact that if you like Contra and Mega Man's designs and challenge, then getting into this game is probably right up your alley. If not, fine, stay away, but like any good game, practice makes perfect, and at the end of the day, their argument is really silly. Video games of really any genre take some trial and error to get good at. I don't care what era or generation it is. No one back in the day was instantly good at Pac-Man or Qbert, but okay, let's pick on Call of Duty for a second. Oh wait, no, fuck Call of Duty. How about a good first-person shooter? Like, uh, I don't know, Counter-Strike. Remember Counter-Strike? You gotta memorize a certain map, the spawn points, weapon pickups, and you die a lot. Not much has changed. You get good at the game or you get slaughtered and get the fuck out. I mean, man up. Some of these people really sound like whiny little fucking bitches sometimes. Now, granted, sure, I wish the game maybe had modifications that could have been turned into difficulty settings. As don't get me wrong, I'm all for shit being accessible to everyone, but I wouldn't have wanted an easier mode. I would have wanted a harder one, to be honest. But sure, I agree, a good solution would have been an easy, normal, hard, and impossible mode, but all we got was normal and impossible. The latter, which is accessed by typing hard with an exclamation point as the password, which really has an interesting backstory in itself full of intrigue and wonder, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, it's not a hard game. I mean, sure, it frustrated me in the past, but so did many of the games back then. Again, would I put Bucky or Hare on a hard games list? I don't think I would. I mean, I find Gradius and Life Force to be way harder games, but those are shmups and I'm not very good at those. But I'd be fairly comfortable saying the Ninja Gaiden games are harder. The first TMNT game is certainly more cheap, frustrating, and has more issues, but it's still harder to me than this. Kid Icarus! Oh, that game is so fucking hard! Shit, even Zelda 2, which I'm actually a big fan of and I have beaten, I think trumps this game in the difficulty department. And do I really need to even bring up fucking Battletoads or Bayou Billy? Don't forget the original Mario. Mario Brothers game, when you're trying to get the pipes, I was like, uh, I got to level 99 and then it started all over, there, is there an ending, I got the kill screen, but then it was like, uh, fuck, mm, I'm playing Sims the Herbs. <laughs> I really feel this game's difficulty is at par, or at least takes the best aspects of hard titles and then puts them into a melting pot, resulting in a difficulty that's two parts Mega Man, one part Contra with a bit of Gremlins too. And for better or worse, it's super forgiving. In fact, it's the most forgiving game I think I've ever played on the NES. I know I beat the extra lives aspect to death in this walkthrough, but it's super important as you don't want to be at the last few bosses without lives to spare, trust me on that. But there's plenty of lives, unlimited continues, and checkpoints out the Razoo. One for each of its 69 acts. And you know, if you don't beat it the first time, turn it off and come back to it. I mean, that's part of the fun of these things. Another common complaint is it's a Mega Man clone. Why? Because it has shooting and jumping and good music and graphics? Well, no. This is a Mega Man clone. When I play titles like this, I totally get the whole argument on the trial and error thing. I mean, gamers pride themselves on being good at video games and getting their skills and reactions to a certain level, and then when a game beats you down, understandably sure, you get upset and frustrated. I understand that, but I didn't get good at Contra without going through the motions. And again, if you want to see trial and error taken to new heights, play the Creon Conquest, or LJ and Beetlejuice. Now those are some trial and error bullshit, and they aren't even good games with any payoff. It's simply just not worth the effort. Sure, it stands on the shoulder of Mega Man, but that doesn't make it a cheap clone ripoff in itself, Bucky wears its influence on his sleeves, yes, but that's to be commended, not a reason to bash and belittle it. It's also a great license game that plays great detail to its source material, playing out much like an episode of the show. But let's get back on track as I digressed quite a bit there, so I'm sorry. The next issue is the price. Ugh, this blows. I kinda always thought this was a common game, I used to rent it all the time. I got mine a few years ago before this NES bubble happened, and I think I paid $7 for it, but now it's like a $50 game according to price charting, which means on eBay it's going for 60 or 75 loose, which is super lame, but what can you do? The fact of the matter is, though, that people who own the game, well, if they're anything like me, don't want to sell it because it's such a damn solid title, so I believe that's why it's hard to find. I don't think it's extremely rare as much as it's just a game that people seem to want to keep if they own it. I hate feeding into this crazy NES price shit, but at the end of the day, my collection would not feel like a collection without it. If you can get it for 50 or less and this game seems up your alley, I say go for it, but damn, it's a weird situation, I can't believe the prices of some of these games now. 
It's too damn high. One very last complaint for me personally though is the game is too short. What? Well, it's actually a fine good length for an NES game, but I really wish there were a few more levels between the stage select stages and the prison levels. I mean, had it been just a little bit longer too, they could have ramped up the difficulty a little bit more steady to make it a little bit more accessible. But the fact that there was never a sequel is probably the number one reason I think this game is too short. I mean, we were lucky we even got this game as the show was cancelled before the game came out. I mean, the sad truth is if Bucky could have lived on even just in video game form, it would have ruled. And 16-bit games based off what's established here, especially with Konami at the wheel, would have easily been amazing great games we'd still be talking talking about today. So it's sad to play this game and see such potential never come as what's here could have been a super game franchise in itself. Anyway, I think I've said enough here. At the end of the day, I highly recommend the game. I hope the walkthrough helps you if you've never played the game or you've struggled with the game. Give it another try. Even at its toughest, hardest sections, I still find it fun. And I've never found it to be too much of a frustrating experience that other NES games often bring out in me. Regardless of which side of the difficulty fence you live on, it's still a must try title. But for me, it's easily one of the top 10 NES titles on the system. Thanks for watching, have a good day.